Welcome to Stories and Songs, a series of interviews with musicians from the world of jazz and improvisation. I'm Sophia Carbonara, and it's my great pleasure today to be talking to Kate Pass. Hello, uh, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my first question for you is, what have been the pivotal events in your musical journey? Oh yeah, um, I feel like there's been so many. Um, uh, so uh, one important one I think was when I started um, high school, um, I was lucky I got into this, uh, my school had just started doing a music program, which um, I got into on trombone, um, which yeah, it was great because I think that that led me down the uh, track of going into big bands. And that's really where my great love of jazz started, I think, was from playing in, in big bands at school. Um, and it was also important because I was sitting next to the bass player in the band and that was the instrument that actually <laughs> caught my eye after playing for a few years. Um, and that led me to start playing electric bass. Um, and then I guess another major pivotal moment would be when I got to university um, and I had a teacher or several teachers, I guess, kind of convinced me that doing a jazz course that I should play double bass instead of electric bass. Um, and so, it, yeah, it was kind of a difficult thing, but um, getting my first double bass, which is the same one that I have now that I'm very attached to, um, that was a really pivotal moment for me. Because I think, like, I'd played a few different instruments. And when I started playing double bass, I really felt like I'd found my, the right instrument for me. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I just felt this instant kind of connection. Um, so, yeah, that was a really important moment. Um, and then as I was finishing um, my studies at university, like, towards the end, I... Uh, saw a band playing um, that kind of changed the tra trajectory of my career I think so that was a band called Daramud um, and yeah I loved their playing so much um, and I was lucky I got to join the band as a bass player um, and that sort of uh, kind of started me on this journey um, which kind of led to me forming my own band Cohesia Ensemble which has a lot of the members of Daramite in it um, so, yeah so that was um, yeah pretty pivotal moment for me. That's really that's really exciting those, <laughs> those moments in time um, that change things in the future I'm talking about. Definitely. <laughs> um, what obstacles have you had to overcome during your musical life and how have you dealt with them? Yeah, um, I guess like, like I was saying, I think starting double bass so late uh, definitely felt like a, a big obstacle. Um, so I was 18 at the time when I started and I just started at a, um, studying at WAPA and it was a, a jazz course and I felt like everyone else in my year had been playing their instrument for 10 years at least and was at this certain level and I was a complete beginner on my instrument uh, and it was not how I imagined my university um, to feel, I guess. So I guess that feeling of being a complete beginner in some ways or well, in a lot of ways, um, yeah, was very challenging and at the same time trying to, I guess, learn um, everything that was being presented um, to us at university um, to do with jazz which a lot of it was new new to me as well so uh that was definitely um yeah a bit of a, a struggle I think um I think I dealt with it uh um I mean partly I think loving the instrument and the music so much is what why I kept going I guess um and what helped me kind of get through that um and yeah, I guess like around that time as well, um, it, I really started feeling like getting these like me the mental feelings of like not being good enough, um, imposter syndrome, all of that, which, you know, hasn't 
really gone away, but it's, you know, manageable. But, um, and I think that, yeah, um, having, I guess, a support of like family and friends. Um, and I consider, consider myself really lucky to have some, yeah, amazing friends that I play music with um, that we've been, um, you know, since we're at university together and kind of going through all that together and still playing together now. Um, that's definitely been a really important um, thing that's sort of help, helps to deal with all of that. Yeah. Um, my third question. Do you have a motto or a personal philosophy that guides you or what advice would you share with younger musicians? Um, I guess the, the like one thing that I think, particularly when I was thinking about my, my um, pivotal moments is that you never know where one thing is going to lead to. You never know, you know, wh what is going to come of each decision that you make or all that sort of thing. So I guess um, have an open mind, uh, treat everything as an opportunity um, to learn and, and grow and you never know where things are going to take you. Um, and I guess like, uh, for gigs, it's like it doesn't matter um, if that's if you're just playing to one person or if you're playing to a thousand people. You got to make the most of every moment and enjoy it. Um, and uh, yeah, because uh, you, you you just don't know what's who you're going to meet and what's going to happen as a result of that. Um, and I guess as well, like following on from that, is like um to really like nurture uh your friendships um because it is a tough industry um but it's also a very social one and having um people around you uh that support you and that you support them and you look out for each other is I think really crucial um and I think if you're if you're feeling like you you're, you don't um you haven't found your community yet um I would say make your own uh seek people out that you enjoy um being around uh whose values align with you and um yeah make friends with them um yeah if you don't immediately see where you're going to fit in like that's okay um but yeah tr try and find those people that you can play music with and um, yeah, hang out with as well. Cause I think that that's the thing that makes uh, all the challenging times worth it. Yeah. Thank you. That's really, that's really inspiring actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> my, last, my last note for you is would you nominate a song an album of your own creation that holds particular significance or meaning and share reasons why it has been recommended for listening and you know, anything else would be pertinent for us to know? Um, so I'm going to um, uh, choose uh, my album Silver Lining. Mm -hmm. um, this was, I guess, the most recent full-length album that I did with Cohesion Ensemble. Um, and, yeah, it was just such a joy to make this album. I guess, like, the songs kind of came about over a, quite a few years of working with the people in Cohesion Ensemble and everything has been written specifically for those people, I guess. Um, and it was just a special time sort of, especially the lead up to recording itself. We, um, we just, uh, we were playing at like Fringe Festival. And so we had, I think it was like 12 or 14 nights in a row playing together and then went into the studio after that, um, which was, a pretty awesome way to start a recording session and um yeah and I, I just think how, how grateful I am to be able to have done that um yeah so I'll, I'll nominate, nominate that album or just I'm still looking forward to checking it out well thank you thank you so much for your thoughts um thank you for sharing I really appreciate you joining us today thank you thanks for having me